All right, good day, Calculorians. We're gonna get started with our first video of calculus. So on the graph here, I have a position function in black. I've got the velocity function in blue, acceleration function in green. And I wanna talk about this ball that I threw up in the air. <clears throat> I was standing on a platform that was eight feet high at six seconds. When I threw the ball six seconds later, it hit its maximum point and then fell down at 11 seconds, it fell into a ditch and the ball stopped. Zero time, I was eight feet high, threw the ball up in the air, six seconds later it hit its maximum, fell into a ditch at 11 seconds later and stopped moving. So I threw the ball really fast. It took off at 100 feet per second was the initial velocity. Now, the slope of that tangent line at zero is going to be 100. If the initial velocity is 100 feet per second, initial velocity is found by the slope of the tangent line at any point. So right here, the slope of the tangent line is 100. Now, as the ball went up into the air, those tangents, oh, <coughs> my tangents got less and less positive to zero. That's this blue line here. Here's, if I was to label this point right here, it's gonna give us that 100, it representing the initial velocity at time zero. And what happens to the velocities as the ball goes up into the air? They're all positive, but they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's happening because the ball is being thrown the velocity, the speed at which the ball is being thrown, it's definitely slowing down. Why is the ball slowing down as it goes up? Gravity. After it reaches that maximum point, the ball starts working with gravity. And when the ball works with gravity, it's gonna speed up. It's gonna get faster and faster and faster and faster. Now it's definitely negative, why are those velocities negative? It's helping us to represent the direction the ball is going. It's coming back down as opposed to when the velocities are positive, the ball is moving up, negative. All of these slopes are all negative. So here my velocity is zero. Zero feet per second when it reaches that maximum point. And then Small negative, bigger, 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 bigger negative, getting faster and faster and faster until, boom, it just stops. So, right, we don't have an arrow there. We're gonna say it stops, which I guess we're taking this, like, we're putting the brakes on, and it just stops, the velocity goes back to zero, which that's kind of weird and funky, but um, that's gonna help us represent our velocity function. Now finally, I want to talk about acceleration. That's your second derivative, your second rate of change. Given a position function, or what we had been calling distance functions, I'm going to tr switch now to position function. It's the position of our object at any given time. For example, I'll go over again. I was eight feet above the ground when I started. I threw the ball up. It got really high. It came back down. My position is zero. The ball went up, came back down position function. The rate of change of the position function is velocity. There's your feet per second, right? Your change, you know, come on down here. Velocity, change in feet over change in time. Feet per second. So this graph, again, time is still at any given time, so at any given second, I can find how fast I'm going using the velocity line. If I want to know acceleration, I take the derivative of the derivative. I take the rate of change of velocity, gives me acceleration. And if we think about this, let's go over the scenario of the ball one more time. The ball goes up, it's slowing down, slow, 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 stop, 
speed up, 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 up. So the, vol the ball is actually slowing down and then accelerating. It starts to accelerate here. So there's going to be this relationship between the blue graph and the green graph that tells us when is it speeding up and when is it slowing down. That's for another day. <clears throat> but this graph is pretty awesome right now. And making that relationship, the last thing actually I do want to say, our position function, f of x, it's a quadratic equation. It is concave down. It is a second degree. Velocity, a line, one degree, it's decreasing. So there's a relationship there. Concave down, it's decreasing. When we first started talking about concavity, we talked about something is concave down if consecutive intervals are decreasing. Came back to us. And if velocity is always decreasing, the rate of change of velocity will always be negative. A decreasing function, the rate of change is always negative. So finally, let's tie in the relationship of f double prime to f of x. f double prime is always negative. What's the concavity of our f of x? Concave down. So there's a huge relationship that will take us further into our investigations. f double prime of x tells the Super fun. Thanks for listening. I hope you're having a great day.